Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. And before going to today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Say this with me, Father. I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Expect a miracle this week. Now, trust God to do for you every word he has promised. Trust him for it. Praise God. All right, then ask the question yesterday and I said, go think about it. So we're going to continue right from there. You know, God was speaking in the book of Malachi and he says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. And he says, in tithes and in offerings. You've robbed me in tithes and in offerings. Now, why would God say we have robbed him when he was not directly receiving the tithes and the offerings? He commanded and instructed him to take it to the priest. He commanded and instructed him to take it to the liver. Now, when it comes to tithes, we're going to look at all this later, but, but then he, he commanded them how to give the tithe. And he told them exactly how to give it. So there is a tithe you give to the Levites. There is a tithe you give to widows. There is a tithe you give to motherless. Now, when it comes to tithe, God was very, very clear on that. See? So now, why would he now come and say, you have robbed me? I will explain that to you. In Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, Jesus was telling a story. Matthew 25, and let me read from verse 31. I want you to follow now. Matthew 25 and verse 31. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, follow this now. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, Jesus is speaking. And all the holy angels with him. Then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And the nations will be gathered before him. This is Jesus speaking of himself, his second coming. All nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate them one from one. As a sheep, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Watch this. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goat on the left hand. I remember, now just, just a digression, a little digression, but so important. I remember one time the Lord asked me a question, and you will learn from this. It's not popular. You may say, ah, I, I follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, please. So I remember uh, the Lord asked me a question one time. He said, why do you call children kids? Uh, uh, kids, that's, I mean, my kids. How are your kids? It looks fun. Praise God. Now, when he asked me that question, I knew he was about to shock me. So, normally, I've learned, don't, and I don't start explaining to him. I just say, Lord, I'm listening. What, what is it you want to say to me now? Praise God. And then he said, be careful because that's how the serpent this now now i didn't know about the serpent then but today i will explain it with, with. that's how the serpent changes or, 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 or destroys destinies so he said to me he said kids the original word kids is children of goats right Kid, a kid is the baby goat. So the Lord said, Are you not amazed that we choose kids, not cubs, not something else, but we choose kids? And every day we look at them and them and say, Oh, my kids, my kids, my kids, my kids, my kids. In other words, we are saying, We are goats, we are goats, we are goats. Now, you say, uh, uh, please, does that make any sense? Hold on. 
Jesus spoke here. You see? Except the Lord tells you certain things, you will not know the seriousness of the matter. But then he spoke to us so we can share with you. You can believe or take it to him. Jesus said here, and all nations will be gathered before him. Now, the Holy Spirit showed me this scripture when he was explaining this to me. All nations will gather before him and he will separate them from one another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. So the shepherd have sheep, then he has goats. And he will set the sheep on his right side, right hand. But the goats on the left, watch. Then the king will say to those on the right hand, the sheep, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer, saying, Jesus was prophesying. He is telling what was going to happen in the future. He said, then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and gave you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and came to you? And the king will answer and say to them, as shortly I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Now, back to what we're saying. Now, if you read verse 41, just, just, you know, about the sheep and goat. Now, verse 41, then he will also say to those on his left hand, who did he put on the left hand? The goats. Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Notice it didn't say prepared for you. I love you, I pray you learn today, please. Please, if in doubt, just take these things to the Holy Spirit. Take them to Him. If I lie against Him, He will tell you. Then He will say to those on the left hand, the left hand, He said it, He will take the goat to the left. And then he will say, depart from me, you cast into everlasting fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels. Why? Because I was hungry, you did not feed me. I was thirsty, you did not give me food. I was naked. He said, how come? He says, as long as you did not do it to one of the least of my brethren, you didn't do it to me. Okay? Now, so be careful when you call your children kids. Be careful when you call your, or allow people to call your children kids. Now you can't stop everybody, but start with your own mouth. And to let them know you are not kids. So when people say, kids, come here. No, correct them. So no, we are children. At most, lambs. Okay, call me lamb, I will accept. Praise God. But why, why should we use all those actions? Can't we just children? We are children. We are children. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anyway, now, back to what we said. Why, why would Jesus, why would God claim that we robbed him when he never used to collect the tithe? Jesus said it here. In as much as you did it to the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. So when you don't give their tithe, when you don't give the tithe to the people that he wants it to be given to, when you don't give the offerings to the people he wants it to be given to, it doesn't get to them. He who has taken responsibility for them is robbed. You remember Paul, when he was Saul on his way to Damascus, on his way to Damascus, right? 
and Jesus met him. What did Jesus say? Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He never attacked Jesus. He didn't. See? He said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. So Paul was going to Damascus with a letter to go and arrest people, not one person. So he said, maybe that was Jesus. No, people, Christians, followers of Jesus, he was on his way to go and arrest them. Jesus didn't say, why are you persecuting us? You would have thought, maybe if he had said, why are you persecuting us? He was identifying with us. But he said, why are you persecuting me? Understand his speech. So when he says, you have robbed me, understand his speech. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Don't be a robber of God. So he says, you have robbed me. How did he rob you? In tithes and in offerings. Now he now said, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse so that there will be meat in my house. Now you see, the purpose of him saying, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse is so that there will be meat in his house. Meat for who? You see, so people think, you know, and, and that's where the error comes from. The error comes from their own imagination, not from the word of God. The word of God is clear. But when men begin to imagine things, so someone say, show me someone who have, who have gotten his house. God says, I will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you, have room not, you don't have room enough to contain it. And guess what they are thinking? They, oh, money, the house will be full of money. Open this room, money, open this room, money, open this room, money. You're like, oh, you see, <laughs> you see, you see, you see, God was making reverence. It's like David said, thou anoints me with oil. My cup runs over. Now, Someone is now saying, I'm anointed. And the other person is looking, let me see. What are you looking at? Uh, I'm not seeing your cup running over. And he's looking for a physical cup. How daft can people be? How daft can people be? Especially when they are preachers. You see, because as a preacher, you are saying, you have been called and sent. You know, sometimes people don't understand these things, why it's important you're intelligent. As a preacher, you must be intelligent. Now, you see, <clears throat> thank you, Holy Spirit. God chose you. And I don't believe God would choose what is worthless. Talk less of God choosing you to speak for him. Nah. Uh-uh. 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 You see, when you don't realize that you represent an intelligent being, you will speak anyhow. You will not do your research. It's like the Secretary of State of the United States coming to speak without doing a proper research on the subject and just comes and say, I just want to say my mind. You, 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 she, he or she cannot say their mind. They've got to do a proper research and be sure this is what the president wants. And even though that's what the president, they don't come and say, my president, well, is that what my president want to? No. They stand, haven't done the research lining it up with what the, 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 the nation, the president who represents the nation wants. They come and speak boldly and intelligently about it because they stand with the president. You can't go there and say, well, eh, he's, you know, it's not me. If you have such a secretary, fire the person immediately. A secretary ought to know the mind 
of the boss and know the stand and align him or herself to it. And when a second is giving um, a speech, you must do your research properly. So you speak like one who knows the subject. Meanwhile, most importantly, understand the mind of your boss. So when you're a preacher, you're like, you're like the secretary of state in a foreign country, or we'll say an ambassador. An ambassador, you don't speak your mind. You speak your country's mind. So you don't go to an occasion and just speak without getting clearance from your president and know what your president would have to say in that meeting. Brothers and sisters, we represent God. The calling to speak to, for God is a high calling. Don't disgrace it. Don't disgrace it. Every intelligence you must employ to this work. Every intelligence you must employ to this work. And look at your work, not, not arguments. We, we are not sent to argue for God. Brothers and sisters, we don't argue for God. We state his mind. So when a preacher gets into those arguments, like, sorry, what's he doing? We speak the mind of God. So we know his mind. And then we speak for him. And, you know, many years ago, I began to pray that prayer. I said, Lord, I don't want to speak in your name. And then come later to realize that I was wrong. Now, I understand areas where clear, more clarity comes. That will continue to happen. See that? That will continue to happen. Because the more we grow in understanding and in knowledge and vocabulary, the more more light will come. You see that now? But then, not the one that I will tell you, God say we should not tight. And later when you grow, you know, say, hey, I made an error. Ha! Huh. God said we should tie to See that? And that's a prayer you need to pray if you're a preacher. Father, please don't let me say any word that you have not given me. And beyond praying that prayer, discipline yourself. If the Lord have not given you clarity on a subject, keep quiet. It doesn't matter how much it is trending. When something is trending, you want to speak on it, go to the Lord first. Get his clear mind. I didn't say go study the scriptures. You know the scriptures. If you, if you don't know, go study. But even when you study the scriptures, take all your study to the Lord. And say, Father, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And may the Lord help you. Don't, don't come out and speak so unintelligent, unintelligently. And speak loud and, and, and shout. No. Don't speak to confuse the minds of people. Speak the truth of God. So when they meet him, he will tell them, I sent him. I've heard people preach and say some things. And I've heard the Holy Spirit right there he said I didn't tell him that ah okay sir I know now every believer ought to have the Holy Spirit and rely on the Holy Spirit for as many as are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons of God so don't come tell me my in our church this is how we do it no sir no 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 Whatever you hear in your church, wherever, Holy Spirit, you know, I, I belong to you. You're the one guiding. Can you open my understanding to this thing? And he will. He will. Now you go to him with the heart of obedience. You see, if you belong to a church, let me just say this now and I'll close with this. If you belong to a church and they say, this is how we are doing something, don't stand up and say, I oppose you. Uh, that would be unruly. Okay, I've heard. Take the matter, sit down with the scriptures, go to the Lord and say, Lord, this is what my pastor said, but it appears it's not clear with even the scriptures. Is what do you think? He will not leave you ignorant. He will visit you. He will come to you. 
and he will teach you. When he teaches you the truth, then you have authority to act on it. How do you act on it? If you have access to your leader, you, you either go to him or you write to him and say, sir, you spoke in all humility, not, not pastor. I, I don't believe anymore in the spirit by which you are speaking because you have started making some errors. You don't talk like that to your leader. He says, sir, the other day you spoke about this. Please, sir, can you kindly look at it again and confirm if that's truly the stand of God? Because in my study, I found this, I found this, I found this, and I found that. Kindly look at these matters again, because this is what I think. But please look at it again. That's a very humble way to put things like that. And if your pastor is truly a man of the Spirit, like you think, and you have met the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will bring conviction of that truth to his heart. You would have saved him and saved the church. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.